Most of my Arduino projects are powered via USB cable connected to my computer. Very rarely I power things up in a different way. Those projects feel however half finished. Enough! In this video uh, I will power one of my Arduino projects with this cool looking metal self-locking push button. Enjoy! Powering Arduino using regular self-locking push button does not seem to be much of a challenge. But with this particular one, things are slightly more complicated. You can get these self-latching buttons in different sizes, LED colors and operating voltage. This one is 16mm with 5 to 9 volts operating voltage and white LED. This button has a built-in LED and 5 legs. NC leg stands for normally closed. When using this leg in connectivity, we will be opening the circuit when the button is pressed. NO stands for normally open. When we will be using this leg when connecting this button, the circuit would be closed when we press the button. Legs A and B are used for connectivity of built-in LED and C is a common leg. In this video I will show you all possible ways to connect this switch and different behavior that results in. It's possible to buy those buttons with cable sockets but I unfortunately do not have it so I had to solder cables onto each leg. I used heat shrink tubes to isolate each leg connection. I will now unscrew the nut and mount the push button on the 3D printed stand that I designed. Fits perfectly. This button looks actually quite cool. Let's build a little setup to show various ways this button can be connected. We would need a breadboard and the power supply module. It will be connected to external power supply. Then we plug in two screw terminals with total of five connections, one for each leg of the push button. First three would represent legs A and B for built-in LED connectivity and C which is a common leg. The last two would represent normally open and normally close legs. Then we also need an LED, so that's gonna be our device that we'll be powering. Time to connect each leg of the push button to the appropriate socket. If you are still watching this video, that means that you probably like this content. If you do, please give it a like. If you are new to my channel, there is a chance you might like my other videos as well. So maybe subscribing would be a good idea. Don't forget also to press the bell button to get notified whenever I post a new video. So now let's look at different variants of connecting this power switch. Here is our switch itself, power source and the device we want to power. In the first variant we connect positive side of the power supply to common leg of the push button. Then normally open leg is connected to leg A of the push button and from there to plus of the powered device. And finally the negative side of the power supply goes to leg B of the push button and to minus of the powered device. In this setup, when the button is not pressed, the built-in LED is off and the circuit is opened. When the button is pressed, the built-in LED turns on and the circuit gets closed. Here is the variant number 1 wiring on the breadboard prototype we prepared. As you can see, both LEDs are off and when I press the push button, both LEDs lit. Let's go to variant number 2. Here, positive side of the power supply goes to both leg A and the common leg C of the push button. Power device plus goes to normally open leg. A negative of the power supply 
just like in variant 1 goes to leg B and minus of the powered device. In this setup, when button is not pressed, built-in LED is on and the circuit is open. And when we press the button, the built-in LED is still on and the circuit is closed. Let's see how this works in our little circuit. By pressing the button we are closing the circuit, letting the controlled LED. Button LED is always on. Moving on to variant number 3. Positive of the power supply goes to common leg. A leg is connected to normally closed leg and plus of the powered device. And the rest is not changed. In this setup when the button is not pressed, built-in LED is on and the circuit is closed. And by pressing the button, we are turning the built-in LED off and opening the circuit. Let's see it working in real life. You can see that both button LED and controlled LED are lit even though the button is not pressed. After we press it, the both LEDs turn off. And now the last variant. Positive of the power supply goes to A leg and then to common one. Normally closed leg is connected to plus of the power device and the rest is the same. You probably guessed the behavior in this one. The built-in LED is always on, the circuit is closed when the button is not pressed and it opens when we press it. Let's see it. The button LED is always on. We open the circuit when we press the button. So now with all the variants explained, let's implement variant A to power on Arduino. I loaded the most simple sketch to blink LED connected to digital pin 3. So the positive of the power supply goes to common leg of the push button, A leg of the push button goes to normally open leg and from there to VIN pin of Arduino. Negative of the power supply goes to B leg and from there to ground pin of the Arduino. Now controlled LED cathode goes to ground pin of Arduino and anode is connected to digital pin 3. When we press the button, button LED turns on you can see Arduino starting up and after small delay the LED starts blinking. UP, we powered the simplest possible Arduino project using our fancy push button switch. Let's use this button to power something else. A while back I created a project to create color LED digit segment that I was planning to use to build cool looking clock. You can see that I designed and printed the case for that segment that had a mounting hole for that push button. I have never created that clock. I will do someday, sooner rather than later. Let's first power this project without our push button. I will use 9V battery as power source. This segment uses this 8x8 LED matrix. You need 3 pins to control it. Signal pin, 5V pin and the ground pin. I will connect the signal pin to digital pin 5 and the other two cables would go to ground and 5 volt pins of Arduino. After connecting Arduino, you see the digits being displayed in sequence. The LEDs are so bright that you hardly can see them. But that is what the printed case is for. It has a built-in diffusion panel. Now the digits are displayed much better. And at the top of the case you can see the push button mounting hole. Let's turn the case around and mount the push button and connect it uh, in line with variant 1.
works great and it also looks quite nice and slick. I will be using those push button switches to power a range of my projects. So this is pretty much it as far as this video is concerned. Do you like the final effect? I think that looks great. Uh, right now I don't have any more excuses not to start working on the clock based on segments like this. I will see you guys in my next video.